How's everybody doing today? Good to see you, folks. Hope everything's well. All my friends out there is doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourself. Having a good time while you're at it, too, I hope. Uh, my reason for dropping in today, uh, I've been using a table saw most all my life. And uh, I've used quite a few different cross cut, cross cut, 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 cut sleds. <laughs> cross cut sleds now and then and I had a couple of them wear out on me a little while back so I thought I'd build some new ones and I thought y'all might find it interesting I found it helpful uh, I, I don't know we'll see I hope you like it anyway got uh, several other projects I'm working on here in the shop one of them sitting there behind me you can see a little bit of it just a little bit and uh, a few other ones I've told you about. Takes a while sometimes. I've probably got about five different projects going on here at the moment. Uh, plus a few little minor repairs and stuff that I'm having to do in the shop. I uh, had to uh, relocate some power uh, circuiting for the air compressor in the shop. And uh, put in a couple of more air lines here and there that I needed. And we, uh, we changed out some lights to some LEDs that were in a couple of dark spots that I had here in the shop. And uh, added a couple of more braces on some of the hanging fans. I noticed after all these years, a couple of them were vibrating a little bit. So I got some braces put on those and stuff. So a little bit going on in the shop. But once y'all take a look at this cross, -cuts, cross cut sled and let me know what you think of it. If it could slide or not. Alrighty, let's take a look see my friends. Hey my friends, here's a couple pieces of yard art. You know how it goes. You got a shop, you got to fix things. They've been sitting outside at the house for quite a while. Gotten a little beat up in the weather. All the paints come off them from the factory. So I got to do a little refurbishing. Let's see if I'm any good at it. Got them all primed up, brushed off, cleaned up. Primed, primed the little birdies, sprayed them blue before I figured I would show y'all. So, sorry you didn't get to see them gray. <laughs> okay, my friends, here's basically everything I'm going to be using to build this sled with. We've got two small mini uh, T-Tracks from Craig. Two guide tracks from Craig. Uh, four knobs. These are just some I happen to have laying around. They don't have to be any particular type of knob, knobs. Three pieces of three quarter inch plywood cut at three and three quarters of an inch. Uh, right now they're rough cut. I think they're at 33 and a half. Their finish length is somewhere around 32, but they're just rough cut at the moment. One piece of red oak. Uh, three quarters by two and three eighths and again that's just a top cap too so it's not exactly critical on the two and three eighths two and a half whatever two and three eighths is great in my case and you'll see why um, two little strips 24 inches long by two inches and of course some yellow glue two pieces of three quarter inch plywood 16 by 28 and that's pretty well all the parts for this thing and all the plywood I cut up out of a scrap half sheet that I had. Uh, it's red oak. I have a, a long time ago, I think I might have told you all before, I got a ton of that stuff. At a, a, a well, That's a long story. But, so, I got red oak, so I'm using red oak. Okay, guys. To the left-hand side. To the edge of my track. Measures five and a quarter. Right-hand side measures five so I'm gonna mount my bars a half inch over when I run them through the saw it'll cut them off this is a little block that I glued on or <laughs> clamped on at six inches
now once I have them sitting on the saw right here, I can determine my overall width for my back panel at 30 and a quarter. 30 and a quarter it is. All right guys, I'm gonna glue the black the back. Remember I cut three of these. I'm gonna glue the cut the face onto one of them like so. Glue glue. There we go. Alright guys, I'm going to square it up using the square and then tack it in place. Alright guys, my second front, y'all might note, I put my stop block track up high. I want it clear of the highest rays I would get on the blade. If I were holding this like this with my hands touching the aluminum and the, alumin the blade were to get to the aluminum, it would set off my saw stop. So. I don't want to have to deal with that. If I did put it down low, I could simply cut it shy an eighth of an inch on each side of the blade, which would do the same thing. But I wanted the structure of leaving it solid here. So I put it up high enough to where the blade wouldn't hit it. I'm going to put my top on it, my little pretty cap, like so, with a little glue and pin nails and then let it dry then I'll screw it on so alright guys what I did here like a bonehead I've been talking to y'all for the last five minutes and the camera hasn't been on <laughs> what I've done here is I've clamped the uh, back of the sled down to the table saw. I've drilled four holes in it equally placed out using my little jigger to always try and keep them nice and straight and what they are going to do is hold the secondary front on. So I've got the four holes drilled which I thought y'all were seeing me drill but <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Just holes four holes to hold the secondary front on. I'll explain the secondary front in a little bit. Okay my friends, what I've done here is I put a depth stop on my drill bit. I'm using a 21 64 drill bit where I'll be inserting these little quarter inch threaders. So. <laughs> Okay guys, a minute ago y'all saw 
I cut a little bevel on the bottom end of the uh, the front board for the sawdust to get out of the way like a bone head I went and forgot to put it on the first ones so what can I say I'll admit I make mistakes live and learn what I'm doing here is I'm mounting the backboard to the sled some people call it the stabilizer board some people call it the backboard some people don't call it they just put it there it's the backboard or the stabilizer board alright guys I hope my camera is straight I've got it mounted in such a way that I can't actually tell but I'm checking alright I put the bottom board on nailed it on permanently and with glue I'll put the second piece on top here and I'll put some marks four equal space marks no particular distance just a good spread on the boards and what I'm doing here is I'm gonna drill it out like you saw previously so I can put some knobs here okay <laughs> Okay, y'all, let's do a little recap here for a quick second. Remember two pieces, 16 by 28. After cutting the inch off of each end and sliding them through the sled, they're roughly about 15 by 28. My back support. And, of course, the, uh, the two layers of three-quarter inch for the front with the track in it. From the bottom of this table to my top and bottom of my track is three and three-sixteenths of an inch. The highest my blade will go is three inches. Because like I was saying, if my hands are touching this aluminum right here and it hits the blade, it'll, it'll set off the safety feature on the saw and boom, I'll ruin a blade and have to go through all that trouble. So that's why I keep it up high. Now I've got to make a couple of stop blocks for it. But first, I'm going to go ahead and split the, the sled in half now. Half a sled. Not a sled. We're going to have two sleds in a few minutes. We'll be sledding. Y'all probably couldn't see what saw I was using. I'm sorry. Jigsaw. All right, guys, I won't make y'all watch the whole two hours here, but now I've got to do some sanding on all the edges and corners and get everything nice and smooth and round it off. So let me get started at that. <laughs> All right, guys, let's do a square test and see how I did, huh? Label this side R. We're gonna do this again guys. Show you there's the cut edge. 
that wasn't a, that speed square wasn't doing too good of a job for you. See if we can get it. Bounce the board. God, guys, it's perfect. The R, the cut edge. Hey guys, there's another way to check the squareness of your uh, your sled, and that is to mark one side of the board. Mark it over here a little more. Number one, make a cut, spin it, make a cut, spin it, make a cut, spin it, make a cut. Then come over, make your cut. And then take your calipers. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> take your calipers and measure the two ends of your cuts to determine your accuracy. Then make your adjustments accordingly, if you need to, that is. But I kid you not, I cannot find my calipers. So hopefully I can find them before I get this done and show you all that test on the sled if I can find them. <laughs> Hey guys, here we go. These are just some half inch uh, scrap acrylic that I had laying around that I cut up. I believe it was off of some signs that I made a while back. Kept the scraps. Using it for some stop blocks. Alright guys, most sleds you see have a, a piece of slotted track, hold down track, T-nut track, whatever you want to call it, laid in about right here and right here so you can slide a little clamper in it along it and hold down your piece type thing whatever you're doing and my other sled already has that in it and I didn't want to put that in this particular clamp uh, sled excuse me because I use this type of sled for cutting flip pieces, flop, flip, flop scenario, and these wouldn't really work. I like to screw down some clamps to the sled in the exact spot where I want it, where I'm using it. That's why I'm rebuilding another one of these sleds. My other one wound up in the trash pile after having a thousand screw holes in it and sanding it down and so on. So anyway, that's why you don't see a, uh, a track mounted in this sled where a lot of people would normally put one, myself included. Doug ain't building a split sled. 
he wouldn't be able to do in a split sled. <laughs> All right, guys, the raw surface on the back of the sled. I'm going to coat with some paste wax. Hey, guys, I went and put four more of those screw downs on each side. It holds the board. Nice thing about doing this instead of having the track in there it doesn't matter how wide the board is I can reach anywhere with those four holes any depth any distance of the board that I'm putting in here I had and put some wipe on urethane on the top of the sled make for a nice smooth surface and as you saw I wax the bottom of them so they they fly Okay guys, the big question, why a split sled? Let me show you. And uh, trust me guys, I know there's a lot more features I could add on this saw. The extension, the 45 degree on one side, the uh, the big miter, the mitering jig in the center, which I have a small one. I put two dados in the table saw for it. I didn't show it because that's not what the video is about. But let me show you what to use a split sled for. Okay, here we go. I think you can tell how beat up that one is. It's had a lot of holes screwed in it. This one was for a 45. Same thing. Put my piece of wood on there, whatever I was making. Screw it on. Clamp it in place. Bam. And make my cut. Right? They work great. I still use them. Uh, I believe this one was set up for the Unisaw. I haven't used it in a while. This one's set up for the uh, saw stop here. And these are great little sleds. All right, One piece of wood and a handle. Clamp your board in place. Nail on some scrap pieces of wood for your stops. And repetitive cut, repetitive cut, repetitive cut. All right, guys, let's pretend this is a one-piece sled for the moment. And I want to make some six inch pieces and I want to make some nine and a quarter inch pieces set my blocks set them in place here we go on a one piece sled my blocks in the way alright I've got to cut all my six inch first redo my setting cut my second piece if I'm making a multitude of these need to redo one mess one up the screw goes crooked in it damage it it didn't glue up right, I took it off. Whatever reason, I want to come back and cut more. Now I've got to redo my settings. They won't be exact 100% every time when you change the setting. Same reason I have two miter boxes set up over there. If you've ever seen my shop tour, you know I have two miter boxes sitting side by side on the miter box stand. Once you've got something set in a jig and an angle for a cut, you don't want to change it to come make another cut. So, by doing it with two a two-piece sled I set my six inches make my cuts I set my ten incher make my cuts nothing gets in the way the other part of the sled isn't in the way go work on my project come back I need to make more my settings are still the same I don't have to move them on a one-piece sled and there we go They're going to get you a split sled. This time I'm going to make one of these. Re again, repetitive cuts. You need more than one. So That's my template piece to set up the jig. This time I just simply tack down some little strips on the sled.
split sled is what I used for making these. First off for the angles and then for the 25 degree back end. The split sled is what I also used for making these. And I'll show you a quick simple way to make those type of things. The split sled was also made to make this little piece. And I had many of them back in the day. I built a lot of the furniture in my house and put some designs on it using a sled like that. Okay, on this first part of this one, this, this one requires four passes to make. The first one is simply two 45 degree ends on the tip. And you could do that on the miter box, on the sled with the 45 jig on it. It doesn't matter. But I can do it this way a lot quicker then I can go over to the miter box or set up the 45 degree on the sled and all that stuff. So let's say you got to make a dozen of them, six of them, ten of them. Enough for lunch. Pre-cut all your pieces. Nice, beautiful mahogany ash. Dirty plywood. <laughs> make all to the same length, same width. Length, irrelevant, width, irrelevant. Distance of the angle, irrelevant. All basically you need to know is I want it about six inches long and about an inch, inch and a half wide. That simple, guys. You don't need to make it any more complicated than that. Making a very simple piece like that one I showed you on the cabinet door over there. Okay, nothing to it. We did the miters already. There you go guys. Okay my friends, first let me apologize. I, I get told the videos are too long, videos are too short, not enough information, too much information. <sighs> Rock in a hard place, what can I say? So sometimes I tend to go a little faster than I should and not explain all the details and sometimes I go into too many details. But anyway, last little quick trick for a split sled. You're running two different angles constantly, quite often. You're using a miter box or the table saw. You can only set a table saw up for one angle at a time, or can you? If it needs to be perfect and you've got your settings set, it's nice to be able to keep your settings. Um, a lot of carpenters and, and perfectionists will tell you, the best way you can do something is not to have to change and go back to the same setting. And although this doesn't solve all your problems, it gives you the ability to set up two configurations at the same time. Be it angles, cut blocks like I showed you, shapes, left side, right side, come back and do it again. Don't, you know, how many times have you made two or three and thought you were done and found out one of them didn't work? and you had to reproduce it. That's what this will help you with. There it sits guys. Well, let's take a quick recap. You don't need plans to build this. This dimension is not critical by any means. It's all preference. The length is not critical by any means. You'll see sleds. Um, I think every sled ought to be at least 24 inches deep unless it's a designated sled. I've seen sleds 12 inches deep. Right? Uh, if you were building it as one part, a solid back, a solid front, as you saw I built it in two parts and then put a couple of my fake little, my wrap around face here and my holder in the back to keep it together as one sled. Uh, works quite well either way but it's basically made for the split sled purpose. 
I put those couple of little blocks that y'all saw in the back. Since the saw is being used split, normally you'd do a full block back here to encase the blade. But in this case, on this one, I can't. Uh, the little hole downs for the 45 degree cuts. This is very simple, very basic. You can do much better than this. You can make it about two and a half inches tall. Put a Craig track in it to hold a slide. It's just endless. There's two things I'm going to change on it. I'm going to go ahead and add one more run of anchors out, out here on the edge. And I'm going to rebuild my back block. Although pulling the saw back that far is plenty enough. If I do happen to hit it, I want it to be a little taller. Most, uh, most sleds will hump up right here for that purpose or stay high. Whichever the case. So, might change that. Definitely going to add some more hold downs. But, 90 to 100% of its use for me is going to be as a split sled. Okay guys, well I still haven't found my caliper. I've actually got two of them around here somewhere. But I'm not too worried about it. Like I said, I'm going to use that mostly as a split sled. I just wanted to show you how you could make it as one piece if you wanted to. I find it very helpful. I'm uh, actually going to be building another sled here shortly. On my saw stop, I've got that extension on the side that has the sled attached to the left hand side of it. So for long cross cuts, I really don't need a sled. It's built into the table saw there. But I've got a little, what I call a micro sled, a little tiny one. And it's gotten pretty worn out from jigs being screwed down on it and um, set up boards nailed to it and so on, like you saw on the other one. So I'm going to be rebuilding it, but it's pretty, pretty simple. There's nothing different or unusual about it. It's just your basic run-of-the-mill um, small crosscut sled. Although I've got to find my calipers. That one I've got to have perfectly, perfectly square because I will be using it for square cuts. So again, I hope you all found that useful. At least maybe found one or two little hints out of it. Uh, it comes in very handy for me. <clears throat> uh, what it basically does is cuts down on repetitive cuts and having to uh, set up a jig twice are the worst problem of all which I've run into is finishing what I thought was finished or made enough and turned out I had to reset up the jig and like I say you can get it close doing it that way but you can't get it dead on accurate so that's why it works so great for me sure hope you like it my friends I'm going to get back to work here on this uh, shop bench I'm building for my friend. Plus uh, a few other things, like I said, that I've got going on here right now. And uh, one or two more. I think I told you all when I, in, the other day when I started this about a few little upgrades that I'm doing here in the shop. I've got to get a few more under-counter lights in also. Uh, no sense making a video of it. That's just not nothing new or grander about it. Anyway. Let me get back at it. Always a pleasure to be here. Always a pleasure to be seen. You know what they say, right? I'd rather you see me than view me any day of the week. <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. All right, guys. I'm sorry. Forgive my sick humor. Y'all have fun. I'll see you in a little bit now. Bye.